Welcome back, Dukes and Dukettes. Back with another Scary Fridays episode. Today we're going to be looking at some Mr. Nightmare stories and some other things about scary events, scary stories that happen in real life. Okay, so uh, let's get started and let's get scary. Tonight! snuck out past our bedtimes to explore an allegedly haunted house down the block. Already messing yes, up! I said bedtime, as I was only ten and my brother Luke was only twelve. When our parents said goodnight to us, I went to Luke's room and we took a couple hand-powered flashlights with us and hopped outside through the window. Luckily, his room was on the first floor. Those hand-powered flashlights worked by constantly pushing in a little trigger that would create light inside the lens. They were noisy as hell, but they were convenient. Once we were outside, we just walked down the block, and in two minutes we were there. It was rumored by all the neighborhood kids and teens that the place was haunted. Everything about it was creepy. The older, more antique design of the house, the isolation from the rest of the houses, and the broken windows and rotting wood. curious and confident brother's idea i was scared shitless the door okay if you if you were scared that much why are you there what are you doing why are you there you guys going to the backyard now Gosh, it's locked, man. as expected i felt a bit of relief of course it's unlocked i just go home but my brother made a shocking move next he grabbed a plank of wood laying in the grass and began smashing the already chipped window. Hey, you gotta get rid of your brother, man. You gotta get rid of that, like, not, not like take him out, but you either, you gotta get out of there. You gotta leave. Your brother is taking a thing of wood and smashing glass. Something's wrong with him, man. Opening to unlock it and slide it up completely. We hopped inside and began cranking those noisy-ass flashlights. Immediately after entering the house, we both picked up on the fact that it was like 90 degrees in there, which was odd as it was a September night in the mid-70s. There was no graffiti or anything anywhere. In fact, it was relatively empty besides a few pieces of furniture that were clearly not worth taking along. It seemed no. we were the first to enter the house, shockingly, no, you're not. or at least from the back. We went upstairs to the main floor from the little den area and continued cranking the flashlights. You play too much, That's man. That's when we heard the slightest crack in the floorboards from right above us. At that point, I would have left. Jumped. I tugged for Before that. to leave, but he told me the place is old as hell. It's just house noises. No, I stopped it's not. cranking the flashlight at this point, and I urged Luke to do the same, but he only called me stupid for suggesting something so ridiculous. Then there was another crack in the floorboards from above us. He began walking upstairs. I didn't want to go up there, but I was not about to stay down there alone. I followed behind him to the upstairs. There was a door that led to a room right above where we were standing. I begged him not to open it, but he must have just wanted to be the big, tough older brother. Began to reach for the doorknob Dumb. while still cranking the noisy flashlight, but then he stopped. I was confused. I could see in the dark he was moving his ear up against the door, listening for something. Silence. Then, the most deafening, nightmare inducing moment of my life a single bang on the door from the other side sent my brother staggering into the wall in pain, covering his ear. We dropped the flashlights and ran straight out the back door and back home. We were so loud when we got back that our parents found us out. We told them what happened, but they naturally didn't care and grounded us both for a week. Two nights later, I woke to the sound of something from outside my window. Dummy. And a glare of brightness sneaking in through my slightly opened blind. I sat up, and my heart sank when I realized... Was the sound of the crank to my flashlight. 
I stood up and looked out the window, and that's when it stopped. There was nothing but complete blackness out there after that. I woke the next day barely remembering what happened, and I still hope today... No, nah, you remember what happened. You just told us. Stop lying. Stop lying, man. You just said it. This is a story that happened to me recently. I was still in my first year of university, and I've only just made friends with a few other students. Albeit an old and notorious university for its ghostly figures and paranormal activity, the campus janitors and security were all too familiar with unusual reports. The art and design faculty was subjected to the oldest campus of the four separate buildings, and the block my class happened to progress in was the allegedly haunted section as well. It was late in the afternoon, just before five, and my friend needed to use the restroom. She asked me to accompany her, and I obliged, seeing it as an opportunity to rest my eyes from the strains of the projector. She rushed into one of the stalls, and I waited outside the bathroom. Feeling that she would take longer than I initially anticipated, I decided to walk back to class without telling her. As soon as I sat down, she barged into the class, calling out for me. According to her claim, she heard the sink's tap turn on and thought it was me playing a prank. As she opened the door, she saw no one else in the restroom besides herself, yet the other stall next to her was locked from the inside. Thinking it was someone else on the toilet, she asked if it was me. No answer. Curious, she looked down the gap but saw no shoes or legs, yet heard feminine whispers and humming from that particular stall. Frightened, she left without saying another word. Class ended and we went home, but the thought of the occurrence remained. We later learned from one of the janitors that no one should ever be in the restroom after five in the evening. Why? There's a known ghost of a woman who resides in the stalls. Ah, uh, gosh. So, you mean to tell me the ghost of 5 p.m., whatever the heck, is going to be there and probably was there. Look, I don't know what the heck the janitor is up to, but you should have called Ghostbusters last year. And what is that ghost still coming on the same day or at the same times in the day continuously for we gotta get that ghost up out of there okay although i know that like ghostbusters is not gonna get rid of it but i'm just saying like you should have been like the priest somebody why are you still comfortable with that? see that that means that the the janitor might be in connection the janitor might be in connection with that somehow I don't know, that's, that's strange. Let's continue. Needless to say, as juniors in the university, my friends and I decided to never use the bathrooms after the designated time. I'm not in any way saying these claims are true, but everything I told you is true in regards to what I was told. Whether these things I was told by my friend and the janitor are true or not remains a mystery to me. This happened a few months ago while I was serving in Japan as a missionary for the Mormon Church. Oh yeah, you want to get something crazy. I was crazy. in the country for two years, and my time to return home was approaching. I was in my last area, Kyoto, a bustling tourist in Japan. Pause. My battery's about to die. Crap. Boom. Let's continue. An ancient Japanese city I've wanted to visit all my life. Anyway, it was late at night. My companion and I were knocking on doors to see if anyone had interest in learning about Christ. We came across this one apartment building and decided to give it a shot. In Japan, there are three kinds of apartments. Super luxurious suites, decent apartments with four to five rooms total, or a ghetto as crap. This apartment was the latter. Yeah, that's where you messed up. Look, like, every time some some crazy, like real crazy happened, is is usually at some apartment. That's low budget or motel. That's where it happens at. Like the ghosts like the dirty. Like <laughs> the ghosts like where it's ugly. At. I don't know. But I'm, I'm not saying things can happen at luxurious places. I'm just saying you don't hear a lot of stories about that, do you? You hear a lot of stories about low budget areas. Just saying. Let's go. 
It's on this one door. We got some cheap ghosts out there. They cheap. Worn out clothes answered with an awkward smile on his face. Being the kind missionaries we were, we introduced ourselves and asked him if he would like to learn about what we believe. Instead of giving us a direct answer, he invited us in. Usually, in missionary work, this is a good sign. But upon stepping foot into that apartment, I knew what we got ourselves into. This apartment reeked with the smell of marijuana and urine. Ah, gosh. This apartment was puny. A small entryway, a door on the left leading into a bathroom, a small kitchen to the right, and a small multi-purpose room with a small kneeling table, TV, and bed. That's it. Judging by the way he was behaving and most of the decor in his apartment, I knew this guy definitely had some sins worth confessing. He sat us down on either side of the table and started to rant on about how he hates Christians and wants to kill them. That made my companion and I tense up a bit. But the man was plastered. In the time this was going on, he drank like ten times his weight in booze. We just prayed and hoped he wouldn't recognize who we were and what he was telling us. Then he said, I'm going to tell you a secret and you can't tell anyone. Hold on, whoa! What? You gonna tell me what? A secret. A secret. Okay, yeah, uh, let me step outside and then just. and just make a phone call. Shoot. I'm stepping outside and leaving! What? Let's continue, man. This is. this is gonna get good. What's that? A box. He opened it to reveal thousands and thousands of dollars worth of Japanese yen. And yes, it was authentic. He even examined it. Oh, you want to? This man was an illegal. You want to make a donation? Who worked with the Yakuza, a Japanese mafia group. He then realized that if this man knew what he just did and showed us, he would kill us for sure. He was hostage. My companion and I feared for our lives and tried to come up with an excuse to get away, but he wouldn't let us go. He kept ranting on about irrelevant things and saying how Christianity was an evil cult of some kind. We tried to explain our side of the story, but there's no use in reasoning with a drunk drug lord who works for the Japanese Mafia. It then got to the point where we practically had to run for the door. We said we were leaving, stood up, and quickly walked over to the door. The guy then stood up and began to reach for something in a box, ah. but we never saw what it was. As soon as the door closed, we bolted home faster than we ever had. The last thing we wanted was him sobering up to find out he had revealed his deepest, darkest secrets to two Christian missionaries from America. Had this man not been drunk, he probably would have killed us. Yeah, I... For all we know, he was reaching for a gun as we were leaving. Yeah, probably would have got capped. You guys probably would have got capped, man. That's, that's true. When I was 15 years old, I was home alone one night for whatever reason. My bedroom was on the first floor, right next to the living room. It's a strange setup. I had the door shut and was playing video games when I heard a strange sound come out from in the living room. It took me a few moments to figure out that it was a tap on the window. I stepped through the dark living room and out the front door and checked the bushes by the window. Nobody was there. I went back to my room with the door open and resumed playing the game. Get you a gun. Get you a gun, or a knife, something, or a bat. Hey, a knock on the window? Nobody was there? I don't know about that. Somebody was there. Somebody was there. Let's see what happens. Game. Five seconds later, another knock on the glass. This time I ran to the front door barefoot, ready to start loading gangsters. But again, no one was in the bushes. No one was even in sight. I chose to just ignore it from here on out. On my way back to my room, there was another knock. I ran over to the window to try and catch them. There wasn't anyone outside, but I felt something right above the tip of my toes. What? I looked down and saw the dark shadow of a figure sitting down by the window. I think I was back in my room in a matter of two seconds with the door locked. I was hiding under my bed trying to call my dad. The knocking on the glass continued from outside. When I explained to my dad, he called me crazy for not calling the police. You so are crazy! He would for me and to 
wait in my room with the door locked. I'd say about five minutes later, the knocking stopped, and ten minutes later, the cops arrived. The figure was gone, but there were no signs of entry or exit, as all the doors were locked and all the windows shut. Still, we haven't seen or heard of anything since then, but it's still creepy as hell to think about. You better lock them doors. What you're thinking about, man? <clears throat> hey, listen. All those stories. That was some cheese, okay? The guy with the the, the mafia guy. They got lucky that he was drunk. Ten. He, they they said that he drank like ten times over his weight or something like that. Look, I probably wouldn't even step in. I don't know. I probably, I probably would just be like, you know what, sir? Let's keep it out here. If I smelt that uh, pee and, and crap, I'm standing outside. Because I'm, me, I'm going to be coughing already. I'm going to be, <coughs> I'm gonna be coughing already. So I'm going so to make sure I stay, stay outside. Because the smell is so, is so intense. And yeah, I probably would have been out there within less than two sentences or something. And then this, this, this kid, he, I, I don't know. He should have had a gat. He should have had his gun. Where, where your gun, your knife, your bat, your, your bow and arrow. <laughs> I mean, something. And yeah, scary Fridays. This is, this is me. I wasn't really scared. Probably, probably the last story kind of scared me because a dark figure. He didn't see what exactly it was. That's scary. I, I see the last two, the one with the marijuana guy and the drug lord, because that's real. He, he's coming after you if. If, if he sobers up so that's coming to you fast but as far as the other ones not so much but these last two the the, the mafia guy can can definitely cap you inside his room uh the dark figure could have been somebody could have been some some spirit or whatever i don't know but those were the two scariest out of these four stories or five uh let me know which one you thought was scary and also let me know what uh, episode or Scary video you, you, you want me to check out? Drop it down in the comments and I'll check it out. Till next time. Scary Friday. Actually, there's a part two. I think tonight. Well, anyways. Scary Fridays. Thank you for watching.